Let's talk about some common problems that you might face when you take quizzes in Monopoly or price discrim discrimination. I'm going to click on the first one, draw the demand, marginal revenue, marginal cost, and average cost for Monopoly, earning an economic profit. So you know you need to draw the demand curve. Demand curve is going to be equal to the market demand curve. Quantity here, price here, demand here, marginal revenue is going to have twice the slope. Let me put my, in red, my marginal cost. Then how much to produce? I'm going to put that in blue. Here's my quantity. There's my price. Now, the reason I drew it there has to do where is a profit maximizing price and output. That's going to be where marginal revenue is equal to marginal, marginal cost. Yeah, make sure I write that correctly. So, next question where is the dead weight loss? Well, dead weight loss is going to be if it's in perfect competition, I would be at point A. Oops, point A right here. I'd have a lower price and higher output. Monopoly restricts output. Okay, doesn't want to write here. There, stayed. Good for it. So, restricts output, raises price. So, this and then part D, I'm going to put a point D. So, that area, where is the dead weight loss? This triangle right here, right there. We're going to call it area B, A, D. So A, where we perfect competition would be, which is our standard of efficiency, where price is equal to marginal cost. Out, price was raised. Output was restricted. So this triangle right here would be my dead weight loss. Now I could draw a price down here and quantity over here to show that. I want to leave it off just to kind of illustrate so I don't have as many lines, make it a little simpler or a little easier to see. So next question. Where is economic profit? Well, for economic profit, I need to put in an average cost curve. At least in this case, we do. So I'm going to reach a minimum right there. There's my average cost. OK, so right here, I'll put it in blue like it was before. So take the quantity up. Average cost is going to be right there. So, profit, remember, is price minus average cost times quantity is equal to profit. So this area right here, let's put it in green. This area right here, from that point, this rectangle would be my profit. I can just take how much I make per unit times the number of units. I've got my profit. So where's the economic profit? The area above the average cost, below the price, or take the price minus average cost times quantity. Got it. Well, let's go on. Okay, this one. So we have a demand curve. So actually, let's draw it first just to make sure we've got it down. Here's quantity. Here's price. So that would be, what, 50 right there minus the slope 1. Uh, marginal revenue is going to start, oops, let's draw it, okay, so we'll start at the 50, that eh, doesn't look perfect, it would be about twice the slope, let's try it one more time, see if I can get it. my slope, I want it to cut up right about there, so there's marginal revenue, there's demand, uh, marginal cost is 10, And as we mentioned, that's 50 up there. So I want to look for this point right here where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and look for this price right here. So this is a question. Let's change it. Let's change it. So my one question is what is this price and what is this quantity? Okay, let's do it. Find those. We know demand is 50 minus Q. As we just mentioned, marginal revenue is equal to 50 minus 2q. 
So if I take the 50 minus 2q, twice the slope as we said, is equal to 10 marginal cost. So again, that's marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And so solve for q. So 50 minus 10 is hopefully 40, right? 2q on this side, 2, so q is equal to 20. So what's that right there? 20. Now, I need to put this in, we know, price, demand curve, is equal to 50 minus 20, which is equal to 30. So up here, this price is equal to 30. Well, 30 minus, er, we know profit is equal to total revenue minus fixed cost minus variable cost. Total revenue, 30 times 20, 600. Fixed cost, 100. 10, this 10 times 20 is 200. And 600 minus 100 minus 200 is 300. Answer is right there. Next, uh, market pricing. Well, market pricing means you can charge more to people who are more inelastic. So in this case, charge a higher markup when demand is highly inelastic. When customers have few, it's going to be more inelastic when there's not good substitutes out there. If you have a lot of, if you have perfect substitutes out there, it's perfectly elastic, and perfectly competitive firms can't price discriminate, or can't mark up price. So inelastic and few. So it helps to have a differentiated product where there's not good substitutes. Okay, let's talk about price discrimination. Assess the validity of the following statements. Price discrimination is more likely to occur in monopoly type markets. Well, if you want to charge different prices to different people, you're going to base it, as we just saw in market pricing, based on their elasticity. So if somebody's more inelastic, you charge them more. If they're more elastic, you don't charge them as much. But that means that some people, if they can arbitrage, as we'll say in the next question, can buy from the person you're selling at a low price and sell it to the person who's you're charging a high price to. And that destroys your ability to price discriminate as well. But let's, so price discrimination is more likely to occur in monopoly. Absolutely. You can't do it in competitive, in perfectly competitive markets because you can't have a market price. So our answer right here is that's right. A monopoly will create more output when it's allowed to pr perfectly price discriminate. That's absolutely right too. Look at it this way. Here's my demand curve. Here's my marginal cost. Monopoly, if it's a single price, will have a marginal revenue that's over here. So they'll reduce output, raise price. But if I can charge this person how much they're willing to pay all the way down to this person, I can get all of these people to buy and I can have the same result as perfect competition. But what that means is demand becomes equal to marginal revenue if I can charge everybody what they're willing to pay. When we had marginal revenue have twice the slope, we were assuming people at, were charged one price and everybody was charged the same price. That's not true under perfect price discrimination. So monopoly will create more output. Absolutely correct. You know, they don't have to restrict those marginal revenue if there's one price. Remember before they raised the price, restricted output, but now they can go all the way down here and have the competitive output. So it looks like that's right too. So both one and two are true. So, and that's right, just so there's no confusion. This is only marginal revenue equal to demand if perfect price discrimination. This is when there's one price or same price. So I don't know if you prefer same price or one price. Let's go on to the next one. How does easy arbitrage? Well, we just explained that. Arbitrage is buy low, sell high. If you're charging one group a lower price, another group a higher price, arbitrage makes it harder to price discriminate. And who is, 
what's going to happen if you um, who's likely to get priced out of the market the people who are more responsive to price those with more elastic demand curves and so they're, they're not willing to charge as much you can't that's why you don't mark up the price as much to them so now they are less likely to get the product so it looks like our right answer is d thank you